Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. I'm James, continuing on with this Balsa USA smoothie build. So in this video, I'm going to be working on the tail group. And here are the instructions. It's about two pages. And it shouldn't be too involved because the pieces are actually all solid. This is the fin or the vertical stabilizer here. I got it under a few weights because there was a kind of a little bit of a warp in it. Here's the rudder. And then over here, I have the pieces for the elevator and the horizontal stabilizer here. And the tips are actually going to be laminated. Two pieces for the tips have to be glued together. I'm not sure why, or I don't know why. They just didn't get everything else is the same thickness in the for these pieces. But for some reason, the tips are two thinner pieces that have to be laminated. So in any case. This is the dowel that's gonna hold the elevator pieces together. Down here is the plan. There's the dowel right there. There are the tips that I just mentioned. And then back here, these are these blocks that are gonna go kind of fill in. And that's gonna be these blocks right here. They're gonna kind of fill in to form that, just kind of, to kind of can, can carry this Carry this smooth shape back toward the tip, toward the end of the tail, kind of fill that in. And then what else do I have here? These are the ailerons. I'm not gonna mess with those right now, but those are the ailerons that are gonna to have to be shaped a little bit. So one thing that I did, I kind of made a mistake or I, omit, I omitted something by accident, was that in the instructions it has a the bottom sheeting here. Let me show you the bottom sheeting. I put that bottom sheeting all the way, all the way to the to the end here using just the balsa sheeting. And then what I realized was that this end piece in here, they wanted me to use a piece of plywood and a piece of scrap ply, which is like right, right in there. And that's just kind of helped support the tail wheel assembly. So what I did is instead of pulling this off and kind of gluing a piece on there and cutting it in that, I just put a piece inside, maybe hard to see in there, but it's kind of, I just put a piece of plywood scrap down the side here i just glued it in and that'll be fine because what's going to happen is the again the little the little mount for the tail gear is going to go through and it's going to screw into that so it'll that's okay it'll it'll screw into that plywood on the inside and that'll help support it so i think that's that's fine there all right so there's actually not a lot going on with this portion of the of the build like i mentioned because it's just these big solid pieces that have to just basically be sanded and then just kind of this one is there's nothing to do on that one at all. Um, there, the pl original plans show the rudder like in two pieces, one here and one here. But in the current kit, they just give you the one solid piece. So that's about it for a little bit of an overview. And then I'll get started on this. Let me see here. Yeah, one thing that I don't typically do is just it's just personal preference. Is I generally like to kind of glue my the elevator and the, and the um and the rudder on and the stabilizer is on after I cover with monocoat. But in the instructions here, they're having you glue them on. I'll do it that way and I'll just cover. I usually find it easier to cover, you know, the pieces when they're not attached. But you can also cover it with the, with the pieces attached. I see that a lot. So I'm going to take that route this time. All right, so I'm go ahead and get started on this and we'll keep on moving. Okay, so the first thing I need to do is I'm going to stable, I'm going to put these tips together. They need to be laminated. I'm just going to use some tight bond wood glue for the middle. Hopefully I'm not plugged up here. There we go. And I don't want to put too much of this on here because I think sometimes since this glue is water based, I'm not kind of stuck here. Okay, well, like I was going to say, I don't like putting the whole, I don't want to put too much on here. I don't want to soak the wood with this glue because it is water-based, and I think that sometimes that can lead to warping. So I want to keep it kind of thin. That there. And I should get a rag. Okay. Okay, just like that. 
Boy, this is pretty soft wood. I mean, balsa obviously is a soft wood and it's light. That's why many reasons why you want to use balsa because it's soft and light. But I think some of this, some of the kit wood in this particular kit is a little more softer than I'd like to see at times. Okay, so those guys are together there. Now, I think what I'm going to do to help kind of sort of pin it together, I'm just going to put a little bit of balsa, a little bit of CA glue. This way, I don't have to worry too much about clamping it. Put a little bit of oops, put a little bit of that in there. And actually, if I do this, I can kind of start working with it a little sooner. While that wood glue that while the tight bond kind of cures up in there down to this one okay well I get I say this a lot and I'm I'd like to bring it up periodically and again I'm the way I do things aren't I'm never claimed that a way I do things is the only way to do stuff and there's many ways to do a lot of these steps and it's important to kind of develop your own ways of doing things do some research to see what other people are doing but I don't think there are any kind of hard and fast rules to, to most of the stuff that we are doing here so take what I do as sort of just my opinion or the way I do it but but by all means check out other methods Okay, so as I mentioned, there's not like a whole bunch I can do here because these pieces are all solid. But I wanted to do is is just so I can kind of helps me when I'm eyeballing things and when I'm lining things up. I want to draw the center line on this stabilizer here. So I'm just going to use my my square, and I've already measured because when I put the pieces down on top of the plan probably because the plan is just a photocopy of a photocopy of a photocopy. It doesn't appear like this is kind of printed out like from a, from like a computer program or something. It looks like it's just basically photocopied. There's a little bit of distortion in the plans I found. So these pieces of wood don't always match the plans. So I've, I've determined that along the way on this build. So anyhow, I'm going to put this, I like to have my the center line mark. This will kind of help me also when I'm lining it up later just to help me kind of visualize and see things a little easier. So I'm going to go ahead and put this on the center line as it is on the plan. I'm just going to pin it down just to kind of hold it in place and grab some pins. One thing that's also helpful when you're dealing with kind of pinning things in is I find that if I put a little bit of angle on it, I've got a lot of angle, that kind of helps keep it from popping up because the angle is obviously kind of pushing down. If you went straight in, then it can kind of ride up on the pin. So I like to kind of put them in an angle if I can. All right, so there's that piece. Okay, now I'll go ahead and pin these guys on. I should probably actually just glue them yeah, I'll go ahead and I'll glue these on now and then I'll pin them. I don't have my gloves on, but that's okay. This is just water-based wood glue. I should probably give this a nice little smooth that up a little bit. Okay. There, I'm going to mark it. Oops. And then what I'll do is I'll probably, once this is kind of on there, I'll probably hit it with a little bit of CA. Afterwards, after it kind of sets up. We'll see. One, 
there and one here. And I'm gonna put a block on here. Hold that down. And then this guy. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these bigger pins and I'm going to use these. I'm just going to go flush, kind of flush up against the piece of wood here. I'm kind of use the, the biggest ones. Like, I don't know what size these are, but... And I could use something else, like maybe some scrap balsa pieces. And that's just gonna, this is just so I can kind of build in a little bit of a gap when I, what you'll see here. Obviously the, the elevator is gonna be, it's gonna be trimmed and sanded so that it fits nice and kind of rolls along that edge. Or rotates I guess but kind of doing this helps me just kind of keep things uniform get one more dude right here okay so you can see when I do this then I get kind of a little gap kind of built into it Although it's probably not going to matter too much now that I think about it because I'm just going to put the dowel here and then I would move it back anyhow when I go to do the hinging. But I do need it on these edges because this, this side, they don't, I don't want those rubbing up against these tips. So I do want a space on the edges. All right, let me move these out of the way. They do this in the instructions with, with uh, scrap balsa pieces. You can kind of see it right here. Maybe. All right. Here's this other guy. Okay. Now I'll just need to put this guy right here. I'll have to cut that, cut these pieces out so I can fit the dowel in there. The first thing I want to do though is I'm going to mark my the dowel itself, I want to mark the center line. That's the center line of my dowel. And this way I can kind of just see, kind of helps me eyeball where it is. And then I can just kind of trace my, where it's going to go. Okay, right there. Okay, so now I can cut these two little pieces out and I should be able to fit this guy right there. Pull this off of here. It's pretty thick balsa wood, so I wanna be careful. Meaning that if it's real thick, it's easier to kind of get it kind of crooked. Right. And when I say crooked, I mean I want to cut straight down on this. I don't want to be on an angle. So the thicker it is, sometimes it's harder to get you. You kind of end up doing a cut and then you got an angle and I don't want I don't want an angle in my cut in other words thinner sheets are easier because it's 
have less of a chance of doing that. Okay, so that guy. Okay. All right, just do a little bit of trimming here to make it fit nicely. Then for A little bit of, let's see if I can put a little bit of groove in here and help seat that, seat the dowel up against it. Okay, so let's see how this fits together. Shouldn't be too complicated. Something like that right there. Okay. Okay, so there's sort of the setup. And now what I'll do is I will come back and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to epoxy this. I'll probably use, I don't know, maybe it's just a five minute epoxy. And I'm thinking maybe I'll wrap this later with a little bit of um, a little bit of fiberglass cloth and a little bit of maybe epoxy resin also. Because that's kind of a, you know, these guys are, I only have one control horn operating the elevator. And maybe it'll help kind of keep it a little bit strong. Everything's kind of hinging or rotating along this, this dowel connection here. So I just want to make sure that's nice and strong. Okay, I'm just going to use my JB Weld 5-Minute Epoxy for this. And I try to keep this stuff in a little refrigerator. So sometimes it takes a little longer for it to come out. I probably don't need too much, actually. I don't have a lot of surface there. Now I know it's going to drip out of here onto the wax paper, but that's okay. That's why we have it. Just going to leave that like that. Boy, it makes too much. Oh well. Certainly not a very complicated step here. Got some big pins.
Okay. Now I'll just put some of this right in that little seam. Okay. Now epoxy, kind of regular epoxy like this doesn't sand very nicely. I should put it that way. So I don't want to, I'm going to kind of kind of try to put it on here at least as smooth as I can. It'll also be covered with monocoat, so it's not a big deal, but okay. All right, so we'll let this sit and cure, and then I'll come back and when I'll pull it off and I'll put, I'll do the same thing on the other side. I'll just put a nice bead of that in there, kind of fill it in. All right, so I let this sit overnight and cure up. Let's take a look at it here. Hopefully I didn't glue it down. Let's see here. Okay, there we go. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip it over and I will go ahead and apply a little bit of epoxy on this side. And actually, I don't think I'm going to have to put the, the fiberglass cloth I was thinking about. But so I'm going to go ahead and put some epoxy on this side and then we'll set this aside and I'll start doing some other things here. All right, so let me go ahead and take these pins out of here. Let's see how this came out. All right, looks pretty good. So I think now what I'll do is now I can kind of start shaping, shaping this stuff. Here is the and the rudder. I always call this just the vertical stabilizer. All right, these are ready to be shaped and then we can start looking about putting them onto the, attaching them to the rear portion of the fuselage. Okay, so here's the horizontal stabilizer is going to pop on here like this. Now it's going to move up a little bit because it's going to get rounded so it's going to kind of fit this rounded kind of uh, the wood right here is rounded this little these little side pieces so once i kind of get this thing shaped it's going to move up a little further than this so it's not going to hang over as much over here and if it does hang over i'll trim it back a little bit but that's going to go right about like that and then the the rudder itself is going to have to be trimmed you're going to have to lop off this little piece out here kind of like this this corner or this end is going to have to get cut cut off and that's per the the plans show it that way also Basically, it's a little bit longer than needed, I guess, to give yourself some room to work. So I will have to take out a little bit of this off of here. And then, so those are going to be like, that'll be on here like this, for example. And then it's going to have these blocks are going to go on both sides and shape this. And then it has to be shaped. So those blocks will go in there like that. And then, of course, here's the, the rudder down here okay so that's kind of where we're heading so the first thing is i'm going to go ahead and start shaping the horizontal stabilizer and then i'll work my way over to the rudder
Okay, so I think that's going to be about it for the sort of, this is most, kind of my rough sanding. It's actually pretty close to being finished, but what I like to do is I'll take it outside and in the sunlight and I'll look at it closely to make sure sort of everything's kind of even on both sides. Hopefully everything's sort of symmetric and I'll do a final sanding just to final kind of get those final shapes where I want them. Actually, it goes like this. So there's the, the rudder and the fin. And here's the elevator down here. And down here, kind of carrying up is that other epoxy that I put on for the elevator. I'll go back to that one and finish that later. Okay, so um, that's going to be about it for this video. The next video, I'm hoping I'm going to be actually going to be attaching these onto the airplane. So that's going to be cool. And getting pretty close, I'm getting kind of, this is pretty much the last major kind of build step. And then after this, I can start kind of working on the landing gear and really start getting ready to cover it and do these other things, get all the guts in and kind of getting close here. So I'm really, really happy. It's, it's taken some time to get this far. Okay, so that's it for now. Thanks for watching my channel and we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.